couldn't help. It's holding at 20 seconds with 2.2 to go. 19 suggested by the clock on our screen. It's not a big gap, but they've got to extend it if they possibly can. Alexis Gougiard goes up for AG Tour Le Mondial, and again, it's Bouet that stays with him. Still, Bart Jan Lindemann is, uh, is dragging the other guys back into contention, is he? Two kilometres to go. 20 seconds, it's holding. It's soon. 20 seconds will be enough, Sean. Well, it's holding off well, and, uh, you know, they're really just... Uh digging deep here we can see the peloton you know is in view but uh, they haven't closed down a lot in the last uh, kilometer kilometer 500 and uh, as we go close to you know uh, the 1.5 1.8 at the moment uh, 16 seconds if they if they can really pull well to pull on well together out front which they are doing it's still playable just about they'll uh, take this next roundabout they've got one more roundabout to deal with uh, the crowds are starting to welcome them and they're starting to look at each other again uh, Benta when he finds himself on the front doesn't look up to the challenge of going for it somebody's going to have to burst away from these guys 27 seconds it says it's nothing like that you can see the pack as they approach 1.4 kilometers to go Flam Rouge is going to be there before you know it and it's Venta who suddenly it's Kidology good work by him Yako Venta for MTN Quebec uh, springs out at the moment and here come the pack clock still on your screen but it's not 16 seconds as you can see that's going to start to tumble as the gap starts to disappear 1200 meters to go he's got to take this roundabout can Jakob Venta bring this one home he's got to believe he can suddenly he picks up the pace and he still grinds into it nearest man to him is Maxim Boué is he going to lose it at the very last Boué is going to make the bridge over to Jakob Venta it could be between those two 900 meters to go where's the pack just off your screen at the moment they're closing like an express train the road starting to narrow and so are the chances of these guys being caught the camera goes in even closer we want it to come out just a little bit so we can see where everybody else is uh, one thing we do know is that Maxim Bouet is here and so is Jakob Venter he tries to drift over to the side of the road here are the sprinters teams and they left it far 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 too late they're on this little ramp 400 meters now picking it up Lamprey are here and they unleash Richese he's going to take on the incline there's Drucker as well yep he's in the frame, so is Baragli, a look over the shoulder here from Boe, and they're still looking at each other, Nicky Terps to join to fun as well, and Degenkorp goes for the long drive, it's going to be an awful long way out, in fact it's one of his teammates, uh, Degenkorp mid-centre at the moment, here it is opening up, it's Van Aersbrook who's starting to boss it, and Terps comes to the fore with Van Aersbrook, oh and Kirkula hits it to front, oh is it going to be him, is it going to be Ulrika Greenidge at the very line, tricking the movement as well, oh talk about retreat, my goodness track factory racing you can break them down and they just reassemble themselves for combat sure yes uh, what a fight to get to the line we could see there that you know everybody just uh, uh, struggling big time to uh, get to the finish and uh, we can see Danny Van Poppel just uh, you know getting it in the final 10 15 meters my goodness Danny Van Poppel he had a breakdown he kept calm he got back in, and you can see what it means to his team. Sean, it couldn't have been closer, but Danny Van Poppel drove that. So did his team, and he deserves the win. Yes, well, uh, the team did you know a big uh, amount of the work today, and we can see here in the sprint, you know, the uh, Lotto uh, Jumbo. They were the ones who just uh, started to lead it out, but Tepstra got a good run at it here, and. Uh, came very quickly but you know uh, Van Poppel was in the better position stayed in the drafting for quite a while and uh, just uh, got it by the smallest of margins in the end super work great work as well from uh, Daryl Impey good time trialist in his own right but that was as gutsy a performance as you're likely to see and Danny Van Poppel after getting a technical kept calm got back in his team eased off they still had the power to help him up to where he needed to be. But look at him. It was all about the single guys in the end. And one singular beautiful day for DVP. I like that, Sean. Yes, well, what a final. And uh, the uh, breakaway, so close. Um, you know, the... Uh, uh, they looked like at, uh, at a time there, would they make it, uh, looking like it was good, but just in the end running out of energy. And we could see there in the peloton, you know, no team with uh, riders to uh, make a big train. We can see Degenkolb coming over, uh, just punching his bars once again. And we did see at about 150 metres out, again he was boxed in. He was in that, you know, fifth or sixth position too far back.
Danny Van Poppel delivers. Impey, the runner-up on the day, amongst good quality group, and John Dagenkolb boxed out as others boxed clever. Sean, you can start the day as favourite, but as we have proven here, it doesn't often mean a lot. Come to that in a moment. Here's your general classification. Aru, Rodriguez, Dumoulin. No change in our top three, and then it's a big gap, isn't it, to Micah, Chavez, Valverde, Moreno, Nieve, Quintana and Mankies. Sean, we were saying he started as favourite, but uh, John Dagenkolb has shown he's susceptible to boxing. Yes, we can see here, you know, he was just in the middle, uh, in the drafting, but again, just didn't get the breaks. The, uh, the gap didn't open up for him. We could see he was waiting, waiting, but unfortunately it did not happen. Well, we'll be getting the thoughts of Juan Antonio with Ashley and speaking to some of the great and the good and the disappointed after this.